Hello, this is Chase. He is now eight days old, and this is his birth story. This big boy was born almost 23 inches long, 10 pounds and three ounces. I had him completely natural, and I had the most positive, amazing birth. Hi. I had the birth of my dreams. I'm gonna nurse him really quick. Okay, so getting into it, his due date was Friday the 13th. My first son was actually born on his due date, and this baby, I was much bigger than my first son. I was exhausted. <laughs> my sciatica was acting up. I had a lot of hip pain. There were nights that I literally could not walk. I needed help walking just to get to bed. So all around, I was exhausted. I was tired. I was ready to have this baby but he was not quite budging. So on the Wednesday before his due date, I texted my midwife and I said, hey, like, you know, we made it this far. I'm super, super exhausted. I'm ready to have this baby. He's very, he was very, very low. He was low for a long time. My appointment was in the morning. My appointment was Thursday morning. She said, come in and we'll have Nancy give you a sweep. And I was like, perfect. I did a sweep with my first son and it sent me into labor. I knew that I was at the exact same time as I was with my first son, so I was pretty sure this was gonna be it. It was gonna send me into labor. Um, and I was very much prepared for that. Getting up that morning, I kind of went into the day just like thinking today's gonna be the day um, that I go into labor. I didn't necessarily think that I would have him that same day, but I did think that it would put me into labor. When I showed up, they checked me and I was already at, like I'm between a two and a three. And my cervix was, extremely extremely soft she said it was like jello and that was perfect that i would dilate very quickly during this labor versus my first obviously the first baby is the hardest that was really exciting to hear um but they did kind of almost have a problem trying to sweep me just because my cervix was so soft and i will do another video on like how i prepared for labor and all the products that i used during labor so stay tuned for that because i'm probably going to record that today as well for you guys because i already know you guys are going to ask me <laughs> and she swept me i was all over i immediately was at a four i left there super confident they told me we will see you tonight and i was like you think so they were like yeah we'll either see you tonight or in the morning and i was like okay on my drive home, I stopped by the shop and picked up my son and I told Cody like, hey, I think we're gonna have this baby. And I started having contractions. They were very, very light and very far apart, maybe 15, 20 minutes apart. They were nothing and I was just kind of telling him like, I think I'm just gonna go home and relax, but today is gonna be the day, if not tonight or in the morning. I took cash home and I got home at about 11.30 in the morning and I told my sister that you know, I think today's gonna be the day, so I'm just gonna hang out at the house and spend some time with Cash, do some cleaning and stuff, and see if, you know, I can just get prepared and ready to come home with a newborn. I made Cash lunch. I washed our bedding to prepare for, you know, a fresh week of having a newborn. I um, did all of our laundry, swept, mopped, the whole thing. I decided to take some last minute bump pictures because by that time, I believe it was around 1.30, 2 o'clock, and I was starting to have contractions a little bit closer together. They started getting like a little more intense, but it was nothing that I couldn't just, you know, keep walking around the house and keep doing things. There was nothing stopping me from that. I spent some time with Cash and just kind of telling him, I'm like going to cry. Like it was so emotional going into that with your first. Um, it was like a moment that was like so changing because I knew he wasn't going to be my only son anymore. <laughs> like I'm... A obviously postpartum hormones so I'm just like a little emotional about it but it was a very sweet moment just having that me and him all right yeah I spent a lot of time snuggling with cash I was just kind of having those last few moments of just us and me with the bone my sister helped me a lot with that a few more hours I believe it was around four o'clock and my contractions were getting to the point where I was able to talk through them still um and they weren't extremely intense but they were getting much closer together I think they were less than 10 minutes apart um I wasn't really timing them I was kind of just going with the flow if I was up doing too much they were definitely closer together I decided to hop in the shower I asked my sister I said can you watch cash for a little bit I'm just gonna try and relax I really wanted to wash my hair before I gave birth because I hadn't washed my hair in a while and I knew I wasn't going to after I had a baby I hopped in the shower and I took, you know, a girl shower. I took a long, like 45 minute shower. I would just lean over the shower wall and rock back and forth under the hot water and just let it pour on my back. I would also turn around and try to get like a little bit of nipple stimulation underneath the hot water, do some more contractions. In this labor versus my first labor, 
I decided to do everything I could just to try and progress as quickly as possible because in my first labor, I had a very long labor. I had a 36 hour labor. And this time around, I really wanted it to be less than 12 hours. Another thing in the shower was that I had this song that kept repeating in my head and I haven't heard this song in forever. And I believe it's Ocean, Oceans. I don't know why, but I kept hearing, spirit lead me where my trust. And I remember just like swaying back and forth in the shower forever to that. And that was so relaxing to me. And I thought, this is such a sweet moment. When I'm further in labor, I want to hear that song because it will bring me back to this moment of just being so peaceful and so calm in the shower. So I got out of the shower, Serena came down and she said, hey bestie, like let's get you ready. Let's do your makeup, let's do your hair and let's prepare you for labor. And I was like, okay. I thought that would be like a really great distraction doing my makeup during labor, just something that was like fun and relaxed and, and easy going. And at this point I was having contractions. They were not intense, but they were very scattered. They would be three minutes apart and then they'd be a minute apart and then they'd be five minutes apart. So they were consistent in a way, not like what they should be for being that close together. So I texted my midwife, this was about five o'clock. I said, hey, you know, I've been having contractions for the last two hours that are really scattered, really weird. And it was kind of reminding me of my first birth. It wasn't so much in my back, but they were just very quick and weird and they would be 30 seconds long and some of them would be a minute long so she said to me you're probably gonna have this baby tonight um if not you know in the early morning why don't you try and get some rest she said drink a glass of wine try and lay down and sleep for a few hours if you can to just allow your body to rest and allow my uterus to relax that would help with dilation as well so i sat on the ball and i started filming my get ready with me to give birth for TikTok because I thought it would be funny and just like a good distraction for a little bit. And then I was planning on taking a nap. My sister poured me a little glass of wine, just a four ounce. It definitely was helping just being distracted. I think it took us like an hour to do my hair and makeup. Like I said, I was on the ball that entire time. So about 6.30, I laid in bed, super, super tired from the wine. I don't even think I finished my glass of wine. I think I had like three ounces and I was just so tired, like I didn't care to finish it. I also like didn't care for my hair to be done at that point because I was so sleepy. My sister insisted and I'm glad she did, it was fun. So when I laid down, I put my headphones in and I listened to birth meditation and affirmations on YouTube. I would do that during my pregnancy, I would do that during my prenatal yoga, I would do that during my uh, acupuncture. And it was something that I absolutely loved. It helped me relax a ton. The contractions were definitely less intense. I think they were spreading out to like five or six minutes apart. I think I was starting to time them at this point. I got on my phone and I started my tracker. And around 7.30 hit and things started to change. Cody had got home at about six o'clock and he was kind of just in the living room hanging out. He's totally unaware at this point that I am as far in labor as I was. And I didn't really believe that I was as far in labor as I was. I was so prepared for having such a long labor from my first. I texted Cody and I said, hey, like things are starting to pick up. And I think I just would rather be at the birth center with Elaine and Nancy, my midwives. He was like, you really think so already? Like, I don't think so. And I was like, no, like, I don't know. I had a few intense contractions where I would just love like the comfort of being there and with them. He was like, okay, so I texted my midwife and I got out of bed and she said, let's leave at nine o'clock. I was like, God, okay, I'll wait until nine. And I was really eager to get to the birth center because I knew it was gonna be where I was able to relax. I was able to have my midwives be there and just feel like, okay, I can have this baby now. Waiting for nine o'clock to roll around, I just walked around the house and cleaned up a little bit, made sure all the bags and stuff were in the car. I had everything off of my checklist. I was also just trying to move my body as much as possible to make sure that I was progressing. I decided to bring the ball out to the living room and just have a few contractions on the ball and contractions about every three minutes at this point. It was like that with my first. So it was nothing new to me to have contractions that quickly. It's not really a normal thing to happen for women, but for me, I guess that's just the way that my body likes to labor. 8.45 after an hour and I was sitting on the ball like, gosh, I just want to get in the car already, but I wanted to wait until nine because it was just like an indicator in my mind, like, okay, now's the time to go. Cody was sitting on the couch and him and my sister were kind of like joking back and forth. We were all kind of talking, like, when are we going to have this baby? Like making guesses on the birth time and things like that and just kind of laughing in between contractions and stuff. Cody was like, I think he's going to come at like 7 a.m. tomorrow. And my sister was like, no, he'll be like 3 a.m. and stuff. And I was like, I don't know, you guys. Like, I, I think he's going to be like closer to 1 a.m. or like 
midnight, but at the same time, I didn't want to jinx myself. I totally was expecting to, to labor for much longer, even though like I kept saying out loud, like, no, it's gonna be quick. Like, it's gonna be quick. They didn't believe me. When we went to go get in the car, I stood up and I started having a contraction that was extremely intense. I looked over at Cody and I said, you need to hold me right now. <laughs> or else I think I'm gonna get, I think I'm gonna go to my knees. And he held me and I just swayed through the contraction. I wasn't very vocal at this point with my first. I was vocal very early in labor. The contractions were very intense because I had back labor with my first, which was extremely, extremely hard. Ever had back labor, um, laboring with a baby that is not back labor is such a difference. Any woman who's done back labor multiple times or any woman who's ever had back labor, like you have been through hell and back. Like a somewhat normal labor is nothing compared to those back, back labor contractions. Those are insane. After that contraction, I was like, yep, it is time to go. Let's get in the car. Let's get to the first center. And I think things are gonna pick up. And I did not want to be in the car when my contractions were extremely intense. So I was like, let's get there as soon as we possibly can. At this point, Cody still did not believe me that we were gonna have this baby anytime soon because we were so used to having such a long labor. He was just like not prepared for it. He was like, no, like you're, he wasn't like gaslighting me, but in a way like he was, he was like, are you sure like we're gonna have this baby soon? I was like, yes, we are. We started heading towards the birth center, which is on the lake, it's beautiful. And about halfway there, Cody's like, do you think I could stop and get like a gravity or something? He's like, I think we're gonna be up all night and I'm tired. And I was like, in between contractions, my contractions were like two minutes apart, three minutes apart in the middle of the contraction when he asked me and I was like, sure, I don't care, get whatever you want. As we pulled up to the gravity, they were closed. So I was like, ah, thank God. <laughs> I was like, I did not wanna wait another minute before getting to the birth center. And they were not a minute long. They started like getting really weird again. And I was getting a little bit worried, like, shoot, like, did we go to the birth center too early? We showed up to the birth center. It was about 9.45. Both of the midwives were there. They greeted me and they were like, you do not look like you're in labor. And I was like, I know, but I swear that I had some contractions like that were intense. They were like, you seem so calm. You seem so excited. Like, are you sure? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Nobody believed me, I think, just because I was in such a good mood and I was so relaxed and calm for my labor, which is the best tool you can possibly have is teach yourself how to relax through those contractions. That's the only reason I got through 25 hours with my first and that entire labor with this guy. After that, they were like, Let me, let's watch you for a few contractions and then we'll check you. So I had like two or three contractions and they were only like 30 seconds long and they were like four or five minutes apart at this point. They kind of spread out a little bit. And she was like, mm, I don't know, Sierra, like these don't seem, these don't seem like full contractions. And I was like, I know, but I swear, Elaine, like, <laughs> I swear I was having them. <laughs> she was like, you seem very calm, so let's check you. I was like, okay, yeah, like I'm super down to be checked. But at the same time, I told her, I said, if I'm anything less than like a seven, I don't wanna know. Like, don't tell me, I already know I'm gonna have to labor for a very long time. So if I'm anything less than that, then just, Keep your mouth shut because I don't want to know. And so we laid down and I had a few contractions during the time that they checked me. Came up with the biggest smile on her face and she was like, Sierra, you're at a seven. And I could not believe it. It was 10 p.m. and I was at a seven for dilation. And I was just stoked. I was like, are you serious? I only have a few more hours of labor before I'm out of time. With my first, by the time I got to a seven, I was so exhausted. The contractions were so hard. They were so long. With this baby, I could not believe that I was at a seven already. I was like, okay, like, yay, like we're gonna have this baby. I just had like the biggest smile on my face. I remember being like, oh my gosh, everything that I did today, all the like walking around and doing this stuff while I was in early stages of labor, like definitely helped. But by this time it was like maybe 10, 15 and I decided to get on the birth ball again. It just felt like the best position for me to be in to allow my hips to do what they needed to do, rocking back and forth and things. I ended up getting in this position where I was sitting on the ball, Cody was behind me, they had like the meditation music playing, I was completely relaxing through my contractions, I was breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth, just doing the one, two, three, four, five counting and knowing that it's gonna peak and let go. And in the middle of my contractions, I would lean back on Cody and he would hold me 
just to get that relief off of the bottom of my bump. The more contractions I had, the farther back I would lean. I'm not exactly sure because I don't really remember the time frame because after I got checked and I was at a seven, it went extremely fast. Maybe 30 minutes later, I asked for a little bit more relief because the contractions were picking up an in intensity. So I asked for the TENS machine and they put that on my back. I started out at the lowest level. It was just like the perfect amount of relief. So it has like a little boost button. So I would boost it. That for 15 minutes on the ball. My midwife also suggested, she came over and she said, Sierra, do you wanna try a different position? You've been on the ball for a while now. And I said, yeah, let's do it. Um, so I got on my hands and knees. I said, I think I wanna get in the bath soon. And she said, okay, you want me to start the bath? And I said, yeah. At this point I was still talking completely in between my contraction. I was still very, very calm. Very much labor land where nothing really mattered besides just getting comfortable. I had maybe five contractions on my hands and knees where I was still using the TENS machine, but I was also putting my head up against like the birth ball. I would rock back and forth with my head like on the ball. <laughs> I don't know why that position was comfortable, but it just was. In a TENS unit, I turned up a little bit. I was looking for like a little more relief. My midwife tried to push on my hips. I did not like that. I asked for the birth comb and that was definitely a good distraction. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. The birth ball, I decided I didn't like that anymore. I decided I wanted to move to um, a chair where I could rest my upper body. So they had a chair in the in the room where we were having the baby leaned over it and I put my arms up and I had my tens unit there where I could hit the boost button and I had my comb in the other hand and I laid there on my arms. Contractions were definitely intense. I was turning up the tens unit like every few contractions, but I never left level one. There's three levels and they say like to stay in level one as long as possible. I still wasn't completely in that full moaning stage yet of labor where you get very vocal. I was just not seeming like the contractions were that intense. I seemed so calm and I, I was, I felt very calm. I felt like my hypnobirthing was working. I was really getting into that meditation or at least I was trying to. It was really hard at that point to try and get to that like perfect state of calmness. At this point, I did not feel like the contractions were that crazy. Definitely had expected to have these contractions and get more intense for a much longer time. After like, 10 or 15 minutes my midwife started asking me um sierra kind of sound a little different now do you mind if we check you and at that point i had a few contractions where i was feeling like i had to poop but i didn't i did not want to like jinx myself i didn't want to jump the gun because i still expected to be in labor for several more hours and i was like no <laughs> like I don't want to be checked yet <laughs> like I don't want to know contractions I guess were farther apart and I was like falling asleep in between contractions which I don't even really remember that part <laughs> before we moved to the bed I told Cody to call my sister who also had cash and to call the birth photographer because we hadn't called either of them yet and we really wanted both of them to be there including cash and um I really wanted the birth photos <laughs> And I was a little bit worried at this point that they might miss it. So I was like, tell them to hurry as fast as they can. So we waited for a contraction to pass. And then I moved to the bed. Cody was behind me. She went down and checked me and she looks up at me and she goes, Sierra, you're going to have a baby right now. And I looked at her and I was like, I'm going to have a baby right now. And she's like, yeah, you're 10 centimeters. You're going to have a baby. All I could think in my head was this is awesome this is amazing this was maybe 11 15 I cannot believe in an hour i went from a 7 to a 10. i did not even feel pain i felt completely calm and i felt like i was just doing the thing i had that first contraction and all i could think of was i'm pushing out this baby and i just really could not believe that i was 10 centimeters about to have a baby i kept asking her i said I'm gonna have a baby right now. And she said, yes, Sierra, you're having a baby. Then that first contraction hit when I was on my back and she told me to push. My water still hadn't broke at this point. They actually asked me when I got to the birth center if I wanted my waters to be broken. And I said, no, that was something that I really wanted to kind of have as my like empowering moment in labor that my water broke on its own. I wanna say it was about three of them and my water broke and it was like, a flood like Cody <laughs> describes it as being like Niagara Falls like, it was just like the movie water just bursted and my midwife was actually I think she got sprayed by my waters a little bit and it just went everywhere but that was a moment for me that I was I was so excited for the pushing contractions were the most intense contractions that I had during my entire labor however the entire time in between all I could think of was 
I'm pushing out this baby. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it. Like I'm finally doing it. This is a moment that I wanted so, so bad with my first. I was praying that I could make it to that moment and do the thing. And I trusted my body and I was there. So I was super excited. They told me to push and for some reason pushing just made me want to scream. <laughs> it wasn't screaming because I was in so much pain. It was screaming because it was hard to keep anything in when I was pushing down. Um, so they would tell me to push and push down with my breath. And so they would have to remind me that every single contraction. And I was like, like trying so hard. And I could feel my face was getting so tense as I was trying to push. So at this point, I think I had been pushing for 10 or 15 minutes. She was like, Sierra, let's get you back onto your back instead of your side and get your legs up because his heart rate was kind of dropping a little bit and they wanted to get him out quicker. They didn't understand why he wasn't coming out so fast. They were doing everything that they could <laughs> to try and keep me calm and keep me in that really, really focused pushing very hard. I moved from my side to my back and instantly she could see his head. So she told me, she was like, I see him, he's coming out. Like, that's exactly what you needed. He's gonna be out any minute. Cody at the same time is in my ear telling me, push baby, push, like you got this. My midwife was like, Sierra, feel down, feel his head. You got this, this is your motivation. You're gonna catch your baby. For some reason when he was crowning, it was taking really long to get his head out. I think it took two or three contractions for his head to completely come out. And the reason for that being was actually that his cord was wrapped around him so tight it was actually blocking him from coming out faster. My midwives actually had to like use their hands and slowly push the cord off of his shoulders back so that he could be released because he was extremely stuck in there. After they did that, the rest of his head came out. I did not feel the ring of fire. It did not feel intense. It felt like a little bit relieving for his head to be out, but not completely. I reached down and I could feel his head. I remember there was a few contractions where they were trying to figure out why he wasn't coming out um because when the head comes out then the baby turns and the shoulders come out but his shoulders were stuck and the baby was like turning one way and then he would turn back the other way i was pushing he was trying to come out eventually the midwives were able to get him to turn and his shoulders pop i reached down and i pulled him and i pulled him onto my belly and i just could not believe it i was like oh my god i did it just birthed this baby it's like you just did it sierra and cody was like i think he was crying at this point i don't think cody could even get a word out. I was so, so, so happy. I want to say 10 minutes before he was born, my birth photographer got there. My sister showed up literally a minute after he was born. She walked in with Cash. I felt so devastated for her because she wanted to see the birth really bad and I really wanted Cash to be there for the birth. But it just happened so, so, so quickly. We were not expecting an hour and a half after we got to the birth center to have a baby. But he came out and he was purple. And so they were giving him oxygen for a while. And I was just rubbing his back and everything. And I remember like one of the first things I said to my sister was, it was so easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was. I was like, I don't want to do that again right now. But it was so easy. I want to say it was like 20 minutes after he was born, we finally clamped the cord and I got to cut it myself. My midwife had mentioned that this is something that I've seen a couple moms do and I think it's a very beautiful thing. Do you want to cut the cord yourself? She said, if Cody doesn't want to cut the cord. And I said, I'll ask Cody if he wants to cut the cord. She was like, yeah, it's kind of like an empowering moment. You just birthed your baby. And this is the lifeline and you get to cut it. Once the cord was completely limp, I cut it and they were like, let's weigh that baby. That baby is a big baby. She said, okay, what's everyone's guesses as she's starting to do the scale. And I was like, nine pounds, three ounces. And um, I wanna say Cody said nine pounds, eight ounces. She said, okay, he's 10 pounds, three ounces. And I literally could not believe it. I was like, I just birthed a 10 pound baby completely naturally. And I'm sitting here thinking that it was easy. I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. I, I feel so woman, like I feel so strong looking back. I, I kept saying that to my midwife and I said that to my photographer and I said it to my sister and I said it to Cody. I said that was literally so easy. And even like the pushing, although it was intense, it was not not doable. Every ounce of me was not experiencing pain. I never felt the ring of fire. I did not feel like I was dying. I did not feel like I couldn't do it. I felt so like I needed to do it in the moment. The placenta came pretty easy after that. Yeah, we sat up in the bed and Cash was there and he got to meet his brother. And I was just so over the moon that I finally did it. I got to have my natural birth and I birthed a 10 pound baby. I was just like, 
this is so awesome. My mom and my aunt came and met the baby. My aunt gave me the biggest high five. My mom gave me the biggest hug. She was like, I knew you could do it, baby. Cody was saying that to me. He was like, I knew you could do it. I want to say it was around 2.30. We got in the car and we headed home with our newborn baby and we were home in bed at 3 a.m. I was just so happy. Birth is insane. The coolest, most empowering experience that you can do as a woman. I firmly believe that that was the birth that I was meant to have. It was so beautiful and it was so empowering. If you have the right tools in your pocket and you prepare yourself, you can absolutely have the positive, most amazing birth. And I'm just so happy that that's the story that I get to share with you guys. The best, most positive birth that anyone could have, I feel like I had. And I just feel like anyone can have that. I almost forgot to mention, I did not tear. I never felt the ring of fire and I also never had transition. I will do another video following this one on the tools and things that I use to prepare for labor and then everything that I used during labor. I hope that this story helps some of you feel empowered and excited going into your birth because it is an amazing experience and you should have no fear surrounding birth. Say bye-bye. Okay. Bye.